Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on LiDAR with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with the College of Natural Resources and Environment at Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and GeoTED UAS. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. Prior chapters introduce LiDAR data, where to find LiDAR data on the internet, how to download, unzip, load, and display the data in ArcGIS Pro using a map template and a scene template, and how to create a LAST dataset from multiple LAST files. This chapter will introduce symbology and use Google Earth for reference information. We learned in Chapter 15 how to change settings to display a portion of the point cloud. This chapter illustrates symbology, including symbolization types and types of points. We begin with the San Luis Valley scene created in Chapter 13. Recall that LiDAR data doesn't have an attribute table, but each LiDAR point can have different characteristics. ArcGIS Pro uses elevation as the default symbology. Here the symbology is a color ramp, using elevation as the value. Other values can be used for display, and we'll talk about those a little later in this video. Let's determine the unit of measurement from the properties and source. The vertical units are meters. We'll need this information for later. Elevation is typically considered land height above mean sea level, but all LiDAR points have elevation values that may represent vegetation or debris floating in water, a bird, or a building's roof. It's important to understand that the elevation value assigned to a point is its height above mean sea level. So for example, to determine the height of a building roof from ground level, you must know the height of the bare earth under the building. Settings in ArcGIS Pro make this pretty straightforward to determine. Let's clarify some issues that arise before discussing symbology. Let's zoom in to this circle due south of this square that we see here. And let's point to the middle of this circle. The coordinates and elevation are at the bottom of the viewer. And these are the values for the location of your pointer. You can use these coordinates to find the same location in Google Earth Pro. Finding the same location will help you determine what is on the ground in that location. You can add imagery as a 2D base map in ArcGIS Pro, but there are some issues with using the base map imagery. In most instances, the exact date of the imagery is not known, and 2D imagery displayed in a 3D scene creates overlay mismatch, which we'll demonstrate next. Using Google Earth Pro as reference imagery provides the option of using their historical function, which we can see up here, and we can slide through it for the different dates of these imagery to try to find imagery that most closely matches your data that you're using in your project. Now we're just going to turn off the world topographic map and the world elevation 3D map because these won't be helpful to us and they'll just cause a lag in redrawing your screen. Let's add the imagery base map. And let's use the swipe tool to compare the, the imagery base map to the LiDAR data. So let's select our LiDAR data, go to appearance, and turn on the swipe tool. And let's just swipe through the image and see how closely these images match. Now you can see that these images don't even come close to matching. So first of all, there's a projection overlay issue. The LiDAR data has one projection and the base map imagery has another. Second, the LiDAR 3D data is overlaid on 2D imagery. And third, the LiDAR data is positioned at a vertical distance of about 12,500 feet above the base map, as you can see here in the status bar. So be really cautious when using imagery in ArcGIS Pro as a base map layer in a 3D scene. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my swipe tool. Now back to the original message that the elevation value symbolized in contents is also the value of height for other features. Let's go ahead and pan east of the large square. So we're going to pan east of this large square over to this smaller square and this little house that we see down here. We're going to focus on the roof line of the house and the trees. So let's look at what this looks like in uh, ArcGIS, I mean in uh, Google Earth Pro. So if we pan over here and we zoom in to this little house right here, 
Okay, you can see that we've got a house, we've got some surrounding trees, we've got a driveway and a road next to it. Okay, same thing that we see here. Sort of see the image of the driveway, the road, the house, and the trees. Now I'm gonna switch over to some 3D navigation. I'm gonna click this up arrow just so I can show the full controls, but I usually use my mouse for 3D navigation. So to sort of tilt this forward so we can see the, the roof of this house, I'm just gonna hold down my center mouse button and push forward. Now let's identify a point on the peak of the roof or as close as you can find to the peak of the roof. The elevation reading here is 2,313.29 meters. Now we saw in Google Earth that the house has a driveway and a road and some bare earth. Let's choose a point in one of these areas. So one of these areas would be the driveway. And the driveway is 2,308.75 meters. This is a bare earth elevation point, the one that we would consider a bare earth elevation point. In LiDAR, elevation is not necessarily just ground, it's just the height above ground of the point. So if the LiDAR data point cloud has been completely classified into ground, water, etc., and if you want elevation symbology to display only ground elevation, then you should use only those points classified as ground. Now let's change the symbology. I went ahead and zoomed back out to this layer, and if we go to appearance and symbology, Let's change draw using to classification. This is so we can choose among the classifications of the LiDAR point cloud that we want to display. And we can change any of these colors that we see here, the same way we've changed the colors of features in other um, chapters. Because there are only five classifications though, the color variation is very minimal. You can change all the colors using the color scheme, or you can change a single symbol in the classification list. You can see here that of the five classes, most of the point cloud is either ground or unassigned. And so the image only appears to be two colors, this gray and brown. They might be different colors for you. To see more classifications, let's zoom into the empty area that we see here in the point cloud. So you see as we move in, we can see a few more colors in this empty area. This empty area is a body of water you can check this in Google Earth if you want to. LiDAR pulses will not reflect back to the sensor when water is deep or clear or calm. And as you can see in this Google image, the edges of the water are either vegetation or sediment laden water. So we see some returns with varied classifications in the point cloud here around the edges. Now let's go back and change the symbology to return number. While this data set had up to four returns, it appears from what we see here that they were almost all first returns. Let's change the individual colors so they're more distinctive, and then we'll zoom into that house area where we were before. So now we see probably about three different returns displayed, first, second, and third. These areas of first returns could be a region of all bare earth or entire impervious surfaces or just a flat level surface of a roof. Let's try some other symbology options in the appearance tab of the last data set layer toolbar. So let's go up here to the appearance tab of the last data set layer toolbar. And now if we select symbology, You'll see on the first row, symbolize your layer using points, we get the same dialog box that we would if we were, if we were to click on it. Here's the same dialog box for symbology. If we choose elevation from symbolize your layer using a surface, we get the elevation dialog box. This classifies the elevations into nine ranges of values. And again, the number of classes could be changed over here in this dialog box if you want to. Now let's change the display to ground points only. We're gonna use this here. There are a couple of ways of getting there. We also talked about that in chapter 15. So now you can really see the difference between the last image and this one, all points and ground only points. There are no roof lines and the vegetation is missing here. Now let's try symbolizing the layer using a surface, a slope. 
And we need to be sure we're using ground points only. So I'm just going to double check that ground points only. And we can quickly change to aspect if we want to. These tools demonstrated are for display purposes only. They don't create an elevation file or a slope file or an aspect file. They just help us have quick views of what our data would look like. This concludes the demonstration of symbology. Chapters 18 through 21 will demonstrate how to classify LiDAR points. Classification of all points must be completed before creating a digital elevation model, a slope data set, or an aspect data set. We'll then demonstrate creating a digital elevation model from ground points using geoprocessing tools and other processes.